say hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our day. Welcome to our day. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> that was the best. There's Soph like setting up PlayStation already. I thought we'd already. That's what we'd done everything. Not even told you about the rest of my appointment. It's sore. Um, <laughs> lower them glasses. <laughs> I don't know. You They're do supposed it. to sit at the bridge of your nose, and I just look I'm, stupid. I had glasses that sit right there, though. Most of mine, as you can tell by the bridge of my nose, they like sit here. And yeah, that's pretty much what mine do. If mine go, if mine go up to where they're supposed to, they touch my eyeballs. Yeah. I don't like it. No, me neither. My mum has glasses and they're like this. And it's like her eyebrows are touching the lens. <laughs> they are. They are. That's very true. I've got really horrible dents in the back of my head from mine. Yeah, me too. Whether it's because I've got a fat head. Same here. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to say. Shut up. <laughs> but it has been an exhausting day. Then mum rang and I was on the phone with her for an hour. Well, like someone picking someone up from Facebook Marketplace at 9am tomorrow morning. Something, not someone. Yeah. Someone picking up something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to the hospital. I did manage to record me doing a special test called ENO, which basically, if you're asthmatic, breathing into this test, it's really cool. It can detect inflammation and it can be an early test thing to see what level of inflammation it is and whether it would be wise to raise your steroids. Yeah, most of mine is between 10 and 20, which is the normal range because I'm on adequate medication and I'm not flaring up. I have had it higher. I think my highest ever... ENO reading was over 500. Um, quite high. Yeah. That was. 20 is normal. Yeah, that was 12, 13 years ago now, though. Um, so, yeah, that was quite a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, that was cool that she let me record that. Mm. So, I'll put that in between here. Mm. All right. So, it's a breath out to relax and then to light up the dots for me and then blow out to move that needle in the green area afterwards, all right? Okay, I'll blow out. Keep it in that green area there. That's it, keep it in a bit more, that's it. Thank you, all done. Um, and then I get to do the lung function test, which, oh, glitter in my eye. Um, hi. I just put my hand in the light, okay? Yeah. It was on the duvet. Yeah. Yeah. We don't mind getting crusty ones off, but they're not, not the wet ones. No, 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 that one was gooey. I'm waiting for it to hit my hand. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. And then I had to do my lung func <laughs> lung function test, which is a fancy computer which you breathe into. And oh, I didn't get a video of that one, but that one takes a lot out of me with doing that one. Yeah. Um, my peak flow used to be like 280 or something like that, and it's now 325. Um, and obviously my lung function was 21% and is now 39. So basically that's just how much of my lungs was working. Which obviously if you, oh that nearly went. Obviously if you think about it, you're supposed to have like 100% lung function. Pretty much, between 90 and 100. Yeah. So to have like 21%, yep. it's really not ideal. No, and I've always said to Sophie, I don't want a lung transplant. Um, I know for some people it is an amazing gift and you may get an extra few months, years, or whatever, but I you clicked it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that shutting? Sounds like it. 
it's got two different clonks. This should be open again. Yeah. Because we're right at the front of the house and obviously the back door is like way over there. But we've tuned into the different noises. Um, but yeah, I, I've... I know two people that have had mm. a double lung transplant. One is... Well, I know of this person. And they're really healthy, everything is perfect. The other person has gone through chronic rejection and is really sick still. And yes, they are still here and they're making memories and things like that. But a lot of the time people, they don't survive. And ironically- Yeah, we know a lot of people who haven't. Yeah, Haley, who we go to visit, she had a double lung transplant, ironically, today, the 10th of December in 2015. And yeah, she had six months, well, she she did have six months extra of new lungs. So quite a lot of her ended up being in hospital. Three months of that she was in a hospital and I think just over a month of that she was intubated and unconscious. Um, so yes, there is the chance you can have a great quality of life, but having known so many personal stories I just don't think it's worth it, personally. Um, but yeah. And, and if you think that, then there's no point in you going for it if you don't want it. No. And like somebody else could have those lungs. Exactly. Um, and I'm the rest of my body's not in great condition. So if there's somebody out there who just has problems with their lungs. Um, like some CF people, yes, they've got problems with the rest of their organs, but it's their lungs that's the worst. Mm. So if there's between me and a CF person who's healthier, like ish, compared to other than their lungs, I would easily just say let them have it because the rest of my body is pretty much not ideal. Um, Can I just interject? Yeah. I'm concerned that the door shut on her. Two sex will be back. She's okay, she's not locked outside. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of like the organ donation stuff. But it was quite a shock having my lung function increased, mm. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, that was the well, least thing I was going to expect. Well, on your last appointment, they were so concerned about all of like your infections and everything that they were considering sending you to London, weren't Yeah, they? I was literally sat downstairs, we were doing our own things, and it, I just said to Sip, I was like... I can't believe six months ago I was about like they were considering sending me to a major hospital in London to get specialist help again for my lungs. I've been to a major hospital in Birmingham to get specialist help. So they ended up not being able to do anything else. They but... done their best. They did some surgery, but it, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just mad. Like my infections are better. My lung function is better. It's just insane. Um, you did say, though, however, that it is a bit crappy that c probably more than likely the fact that we've barely been anywhere for the last 18 months is a big factor in that. Yeah. Because although I've had my normal bug, I've not had any other external bugs. I've had a cold, which was a few weeks ago, mm. but I've not had anything major. Um, and obviously, we've not had COVID. Um, so we've not had that kind of interfering with my lungs either. <clears throat> so that's insane. I just, my brain is trying to compute it. And I said to Sip afterwards, like, maybe one day I could actually come off oxygen. I know I'm sat here about my oxygen on. I can sit here and not have it on. I'm fine. Um, she says she's fine, sometimes she's not. Sometimes I look at her and she's got blue lips and I'm like, you need your face on. I'm cold. That's usually her reply. Yeah. Um, I usually give her a very hard look. But yeah, I do try to sit here sometimes without it on because I, I do want to come off of it. I don't want to be tied with these tubes all the time, so... Yeah. The... And she has been told that she's okay to do yeah, that. Yeah, I have checked with that. Um... It, when I'm doing a lot of movement and moving around, I have to wear it because my sash does plummet. Plummet? Plummet. Um, plummet? <laughs> I did get diagnosed with 
like officially diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency which we knew she had yeah i had a crisis back when i lived in bristol so that was well over 10 years ago um and that's when it was first brought to me about adrenal insufficiency so i've always been cautious about it so for those that don't know there's by your kidneys there's these tiny little acorn gland thing sized glands and the stuff that comes out of it into your body is what deals with your fight or flight so it's like natural cortisol so like a general yeah basically um and when there's people who have like lung disease or autoimmune diseases and things like that we get given steroids which are great but they have side effects yeah and one of them is once you've been on them for as long as i have um i've been on them all my life like on and off and when i got brittle asthma i've been on them continuously and um, a lot of the time it's very high doses yeah so when this happens it turns off your natural cortisol level like system thing <clears throat> and if it's off like turned off for a long period of time it just never wakes back up again and then that's when you need to remain on steroids for like the rest of your life like me um if you miss a day or you're in a car crash for example and it's like a really bad wreck and you go to hospital and you haven't taken your meds yet the hospital needs to know because they need to give you emergency treatment because without having that your steroids you don't have your fight or flight and the adrenaline and it can make you really sick you've gone to hospital before in an emergency and they haven't given you your steroids have mm-hmm. they um and we learned that we would take some with us and i i would give them to you wouldn't yeah. i which obviously you're not supposed to do but on the other hand we knew that if she didn't have them because when you go into the hospital in an emergency like yes they do like the acute sort of like right now sort of treatments but they don't get like your, your normal everyday meds. normal meds <clears throat> no and yes like when when you have an asthma attack they that would be one of the things that they would give you but, but it's not the priority first no. of all they give you nebulizers yeah um so yeah we've had it where i've not had them because of pharmacy screwing up and just in that short space of time i get really sick and we end up having to get the doctor out and they have to give me a like a jab in my ass and yeah just it's not brilliant um but yeah it can really have to just like jab in the ass (laughs) yeah um but yeah it can make you really sick and it can kill you if you don't get the emergency treatment so So, that's quite scary so we've we've definitely learned to uh yes always order them even if we have a few spares Mm -hmm. so that we've got enough and we carry some with us like all the time in the pineapple um some people will not know what we're all about. If they've been with watching our vlogs long enough. <laughs> so I've got this little card. I've had these before. I lose them. Never carry them. <laughs> However, I've got this one now. Hang on, because it's got my hospital number. It's not got, it's not got your emergency contact though, is it? <laughs> um, it's now a, a steroid emergency card. Um and it's like got all the details on the front and then on the back it's got the treatment and the medication that I would need in an emergency um it's got it's got the name my name my date of birth my NHS number why I'm on steroids and then it's got emergency contacts who are like for my next of kin my consultants put 111 slash 999 that's not right no. no not at all <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna laminate that i'll put it on my phone um because everything's on my phone and my phone's always with me um but yeah maybe attach a small note with my, my telephone number on it maybe yeah 
that might help. Yeah. So although we've known about it, obviously it is still a bit of a shock that it's like officially documented now. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to be seeing an endocrinologist like outpatiently because I'm happy with my consultant controlling it and I'm controlled with it. Um, it's only if the pharmacy screw up that things can go wrong. Um, and obviously it would mean needing to go to the hospital more, which is risking getting COVID. And I just don't need to see anybody. No. Um, if things change and then it goes further than what my consultant is aware of, then yeah, I'll get referred. But at the moment it's all okay. Yeah. Positive so. appointment. Indeed. So we're gonna go chill now because we are knackered. And we've got an early start. Yes. But money. <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, that's kind of been our day. Tiring. Yes. Whoa. So I think it's going on a very exhausting day of us. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night. That was awesome. It was.